Hi, this is Patrick from Motion VFX, and today I'm happy to be showing off M Counter. M Counter is a pack of 20 neat and clean counter presets now available for DaVinci Resolve. To locate all of your M Counter presets, navigate to the effects library on the edit page. Then you want titles, motion VFX, and you want to come to M Counter. Here you'll see all of the included presets listed, and you can preview any of these just by scrubbing your mouse over the effect name. And if there's a preset you especially like, you can click this star to the right of the name to add it to your favorites. And from there, all you have to do is choose a preset you like and drag it right to your timeline over any footage. A simple keyboard shortcut you could keep in mind is Control D or Command D on a Mac. This will bring up this dialog to set the clip duration. Instead of stretching it out, you can be really precise here. So if I know I want a counter of 30 seconds, I can type that right in and the clip will automatically stretch to that length. I've pulled in counter 20 here, and this will be a great example to go in depth on some of the custom controls you have access to when setting up these presets. And to get access to those presets, you wanna open up your inspector over here. Like a lot of motion VFX presets, these do have in and out animation checkboxes. So these have really smooth, nice, sleek animation in, but of course, if you always want them to pop in, just check that off and boom, it'll pop in or it'll pop out. But we want that animation on for now. And right underneath that, we have content controls. These are our main transform options where you can move where this preset is in frame, its general size and rotation. I want uh, just about all those normal, except I will move this position and just have this sort of floating in this empty space um, in front of this person's head here. Now, right underneath that, we have timer controls, and this is where stuff starts to get interesting. The first thing we have inside here is timer running. And if I skim through this, you'll see, yeah, it's a counter, it is ticking up, and as the time ticks up, that bar fills with this color gradient as well. But we do have this main timer running checkbox. If you uncheck that, boom, it is completely static. And that is something we can actually have more custom control uh, with some of our later parameters we have access to. But for now, I want that running. And then to demonstrate our next option, timer reverse. If you want this counting down from something, this was a 30 second timeline. So as this goes down, it counts down all the way down to zero. Now underneath that, we have some really important controls. And those are individual controls for the hours, minutes, and seconds and how they appear. By default, this is a 30 second countdown. And something really interesting is coded into these presets. Say if I bring up these hours a little bit, so, you know, two hours. If I then uncheck the hours on, it shifts that offset to the minutes. So yes, two hours is 120 minutes. And then if we had uh, no hours there, but say we had uh, like five minutes, but we only wanted seconds, hey, that's 322 seconds. And then it would also count down. Uh, it is only counting down 30 seconds in there, so it counts down to five minutes rather. But you have a lot of control over how you want these to look. And using these offset controls, you can absolutely have it uh, start or end at any time you want. And just so you can't get in trouble, uh, both the minutes and seconds does cap itself at 59. And then the last control here is this seconds zero cut. You'll see when I have that off, if I also uncheck my minutes, so we have just the seconds counter, then when we get under 10, we have 0, 09, 0, 08, 0, 07, and so on. But if we check this, then it goes to single digits when it is down to single digits. This is a great feature, especially for high energy countdowns or where you really wanna drive emphasis. It also centers this, it looks great. This is a really cool feature here. And that is the last control we have here in timer controls, but then we have timer style controls. And you might recognize a lot of these controls as text controls because it is affecting how this text looks. You can change the font to any other font. Ooh, what was this one? That was fun. You can pull up the scale. Uh, you do have this background, which you can toggle on or off, but a really important setting is force mono spaced. Especially if you start working with different fonts, when these fonts start shifting around, you can sort of see this, even though this first column is what's changing, the width of that is pushing this one all over the place as this goes back and forth. If I were to click force mono spaced, then each digit would stay in its exact position and only change when it needed to. It wouldn't shift or bounce any of the others around. But with that, I do think I like my original font. And we can move on from there to line controls. The other major element in this scene is this line here. You can see it is 
uh, starting here because it is counting down. It starts with this gradient and shifts it off. And uh, remember, if I come back to timer controls, if I uncheck timer reverse, it will start all white and then fill with the color. But timer reverse for now, and then we have line controls. One, if you want the line at all. <laughs> and then you have separate position controls, separate size controls, uh, thickness, a whole lot of options, including uh, lots of color controls. Whether you want this bar to be something all by itself, and then of course, separate control over this gradient. You can mix that up however you want. Tons of different looks, tons of potential. And while that's pretty straightforward, underneath that you do have manual progress. And this is just to give you a lot of control. If I actually come up and uncheck timer running, it will keep that text at zero. But now I can come in and set, I will make this back that white. I can set a keyframe of manual progress and come to any point. And if I pull that up to one, then it will execute that move uh, going back for, cause I have time in reverse here. But if I uncheck that as well, then it will start white and pull that color up based on my own custom keyframes. So if you don't want something exactly driven by the time, or if you want the bar to fill up a little before the countdown, you have a lot of control. But if you do want to use this manual progress, but you also want a text countdown, what you can actually do is actually click and hold alt and drag a new copy of your counter. So now in the bottom counter, I will go and I will actually also uncheck seconds. And then on top counter, I will uncheck line. So it looks like we're back where we were, but actually if I disable my video tracks, you'll see this top counter is just the numbers. This bottom counter is just the line. So I can come back into that top counter, turn back on minutes or seconds or uh, whatever we would like to do. So you can see that the numbers are going on their own and the bar is disconnected, executing its own move here. This is just one demonstration, but a lot of these presets do have custom controls with tons of flexibility. So let's check out another one. I will uh, clear out these, open up my effects library and pull in another one. This time I am pulling an M counter 11. I'll pull that to my timeline, control D to set duration and set that to 30 seconds. Then we can uh, move on with our main transform controls slide that over up get it a little more uh, visual here great and right away if we jump into clock controls you'll see you have those same hours minutes and seconds controls uh, but here you'll see they represent visually very different we don't have numbers for those hours minutes and seconds but we have these actual clock hands so if i uncheck any of these hours minutes or seconds it will turn on those individual hands and i can use these offset controls to set what time I want the clock to start at. You can see here it is uh, 10 after 10 and 25 seconds. And if I were to come back to the beginning of this clip when it animates in, yes, that starts at exactly 25, but I could change this to anything I want. If I wanted exactly noon or I guess midnight, hey, we could do that. And also pay attention to when I move the seconds hand, the minutes hand also moves the small but correct amount and same with the minutes hand. If I start to change this offset, you can see the hour hand slowly moving towards that first one as the minutes gets closer. Very, very cool. And of course, even more controls for the style. You can change the color on all of these and even the numbers around the edges as well. Lots and lots of control. So let's keep moving and check out another example. This time we are gonna look at M counter six. Drag it on, control D, 30 seconds. And we have this really cool flip counter. Look at this, counting up by default, really, really great look. And again, a lot of those same controls, by default, hours and minutes are off here. If you turn them on, you get that same time code look. And by default, this will flip all of the numbers, even if they are zero. So if for whatever reason, uh, say you do have a few minutes on there, maybe an hour, you're tipping down, but you don't want them to refresh every time, we can use that same duplicate trick from earlier. I will hold Alt, I'm also holding Shift so this doesn't slide in time. And now we have two duplicates right on top of each other. And on the top, I am going to uncheck seconds. And on the bottom, I'm gonna uncheck minutes and hours. Now these will overlap, but we can use our content controls for that. Top, I will slide to the right a little bit. I will also come down to description controls, uh, uncheck seconds. Uh, since we only need one uh, time, it says seconds here. But back up on content controls, I will shift that a little bit to the left. On my duplicate, I will shift that a little bit to the right. And here I'm actually gonna zero out hours 
as well because by default it gets rid of this little separator. So this will work uh, great with just minutes. If you also want to do it with hours, you'll probably need another duplicate. But here we can come seven minutes, eight seconds, and then in description, hey, I can kick this over. Background as well. And then now all I need to do is go back to this minutes hand here, uncheck timer running. And then the only thing that will update, actually in this instance, I'll probably come to description. Uh, uncheck that as well, since it's not just minutes, or it's not just seconds, it's minutes and then seconds. But hey, the seven stays still, the six keeps on flipping away, looking great. And while this workaround is effective, I do want to note that we do plan to update this preset in the future so that flip effect does only happen on numbers that are actively changing. But if you pick up this pack or really any other motion VFX pack, you'll be notified of updates in M Installer when they're available. Another interesting control here is with this little gap in the middle of our logo sort of to represent that flip counter. Uh, you do have an option, you can toggle that off. You can increase the gap size to a wild degree. <laughs> Uh, or keep everything back where you want it. That's cool. That looks great. This is a little more sporty. It looks cool. I like it. Uh, but we are moving on to something else very interesting. And that is going to be in M counter 7. I'll drag it on. Duration 30. And get to work. Where a lot of these counters are automatic over the entire length of the counter, this just has an animate in. And you can see by default, it goes from 0 all the way up to 2022. 20, but in our uh, counter controls here, you can see we have that same running checkbox, but we also have a start value and an end value and a digits. So while this is really great, I'll also, hey, go ahead and uh, shift this up into that empty spot we were working on earlier. While this is really great for showing off, you know, the years passing, if you're starting in, I don't know, uh, 1980 and you want to zoom ahead from 1980, up to 2022 there you go you can do it but you do have this digits amount control too so you could crank this up and uh, go to whatever year in the future you want to or really whatever number you want to represent but it is important to note that while this digits amount is set at six the default start and end values both appear to be limited to four digits but if i don't want to come up to 2022 say i want to come up to 10,000 2022, all I have to do is click in that box, add those numbers, and we'll increase the scale accordingly. That's cool. We have even more we want to show off with counter 10. I will drag that to my timeline, and I'm actually going to leave this as its default five second duration for now. Now, when you look at this preset, it looks just like a standard counter, but if you skim, hey, nothing is happening. And that is because in our timer controls, even though the timer is running, only the hour and minutes are on. And if we toggle seconds on, then we will start to see that count up as this preset goes along. And while that is still useful, I'm actually gonna uncheck seconds and we're gonna look at these very interesting controls down here, time speed up. Whereas the hours offset affect what time the countdown starts, if I check time speed up, that won't affect the start, but instead of just counting up one second at a time, now it will fly through time and end at the time we set with this speed up hours. This is super powerful and you can actually use this narratively so many different ways. I will also slide this back up into this space so it's a little easier to see. But just imagine, say you have a character here at the arcade. Maybe he's having fun. He's not realizing time is flying away. And oh no, he's late for, I don't know, dinner. <laughs> or someone could be really bored or really nervous. Anytime you want to show time flying by, this is a great preset and you can fine tune it to exactly the time you want to show. And you can bring it a step further by affecting the footage underneath the effect as well. I'm going to click on my clip and go to retime curve. If I give myself some space to work, you'll see I can change this from retime frame to retime speed. Also, uncheck retime frame and now we have this main line that is the speed of our clip if i click to select this retime speed control i can come to the beginning of my clip i click this button to set a keyframe come forward to the end set another keyframe and then now this line represents the speed which you can see is 100 percent if i pull up that line in between the two points You'll see it does pull in the second keyframe because um, it is stretching time, but I can then pull that second keyframe back out. So now 
we are at almost 300 speed while this effect is up and then i can select either one of those click this button to ease it out just a bit and then now if we preview this scene this character is just gaming away but then oh no loses track of time starts flying forward the clip is speeding up as it times forward and then he gets back in real time oh no so much time has passed that is super flexible but with that out of the way we can move on i'm going to come over to speed to change in my inspector and actually click this button to reset all of those controls then i can get rid of that extra view as well but we're going to move on to the last preset we are going to look at and that is m counter 16. that's this great circle with this gradient originally and it comes on and then starts counting up looking great Again, we are moving these content controls, give it a little bit more space. Actually, let's zoom back. Let's do something cool. Just put this down in this bottom left corner. We have this big uh, view of this chair here and this looks, oh, this really pops right in that corner. That looks great. And I will just stretch this out uh, by hand this time, but counting up, good, good, good. Here are the options we want to look at are over in circle controls. I will click that, open up, and you can see, hey, we can always toggle off the circle. And then we have some of the extra options here. First, being fill, if you want it completely filled in, that looks good. You do see uh, the colors get a little harsher in the center, but that has to do with this color gradient. I will uncheck that for now, but hey, I will pull up the thickness a little bit. Now this gradient is really interesting. You can see we are pulling in several different colors and each of those colors is on this line here. But we also have these little arrows underneath and those are defining the specific colors that make up this gradient. So you see first, if I click this first arrow, it's this yellow. The second, we come to this red and it automatically fades between the two colors at that point. I can move this arrow and you can see that influencing the color in our graphic. If I want a lot more blue, and at any time we can click in here and it will add another arrow so we can uh, add as many colors as we want to get this uh, circle looking very very vibrant now we do have this animation in which at first you might think that's what this gradient speed is control over but it is not because you'll see gradient speed is currently zero and as we play through all these colors stay in the same position but if we start to pull up this gradient then over time as that counter is going these colors will rotate around the scene and add a good bit of like dynamic color, dynamic movement, especially depending on how many colors you have going on. This might be uh, more subtle, more bold, but again, another great customization option. And that is just a small taste of what is inside M counter. So many different looks, so many different styles and a lot, a lot of ways to customize them to fit your project perfectly. And among all those controls, don't forget in the inspector, you have this main M counter button. If you want more information on M counter or more information on motion VFX in general, click that button and that will send you right over to motion VFX where you can learn more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.